So to start with the presentation, uh, soon we are going to start with a nurse-led via screening program at our OPD at AIMS Rishikesh, and I'll be discussing the SOP of that program basically here. So what, what is the uh, background for this program? As screening by VIA has brought a paradigm shift in cervical cancer screening, like uh, Dr. Ipsita Shahu and Dr. Uh, Haida, they have already explained in detail uh, that uh, why it is important to have the VIA screening program, uh, especially in the primary and the secondary prevention part of cancer of cervix. And uh, screening of cancer of cervix will be required as millions of women have already been exposed to HPV virus and they are at risk for development of pre cancers and cancers. Next please. WHO and Government of India, they have already endorsed various programs which are based on via as a screening test, especially in resource constrained settings like ours. Next please. Now why there is need for nurse led via screening program? Nurse-led initiative or nurse-led clinics, this is a new up upcoming innovative idea. Like recently, we have a nurse practitioner course also going on in India, which used to be initially in abroad only, but now sooner we'll be having our own nurse practitioners in India. So this is a part of that. And besides this, the nurses have required competency and knowledge to begin such initiatives. VIA is a cost-effective method for screening as compared with cytology and HPV testing. So having the nurses involved in such type of screening program is the need of the R, especially in resource-constrained settings like ours. Next, please. So objectives of our program are to assess knowledge regarding cancer of cervix, screening test, and HPV vaccination among the target women to bring forth awareness of the treatment modalities as cancer of cervix is treatable if it is diagnosed at a pre-invasive stage. Next, please. To impart knowledge regarding vaccination among the school age going children, nine to 15 years through women who will be attending this screening program. So simultaneously, we will be doing counseling of the women also about the vaccination program. Next, please. To perform via in all eligible women in the age group of 30 to 65 years who will be visiting Gaini OPD AIMS Rishikesh. So uh, every day from 9 o'clock in the morning to 1 p.m. in the afternoon, we will be having this screening program run by a via trained nursing personnel. And we are planning to involve all our AIMS fe eligible female employees of AIMS Rishikesh also in this program. And we are planning to have a special Wednesday via Wednesday cleaning that will be run uh, from 2 to 4 every Wednesday. And the last objective will be to follow up these uh, uh, women who came out to be via positive uh, to navigate uh, that uh, final, uh, final diagnosis and treatment. <laughs> Stakeholders of the program Better will be by female nursing personnel. Next, please. Next, please. Vandana, we've lost you. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, please. So stakeholders of the program are the VIA trained nursing personnel. At present, we have 25 nurses which are trained in VIA screening program and the faculty and residents of obstetric and gynae department of AIMS Rishikesh. Next, please. Now the materials and instrument that we need to run this screening program in physical settings, we are already having a spacious room with examination couch and the manpower that will be involved in this screening program will be one via trained nurse will be acting like a counselor and another via trained nurse, she will be performing the procedure. Besides this, we'll be having a lots of learning resources in the form of posters, pamphlets and videos to increase the awareness about the prevention and treatment part of cancer of cervix. The equipment that we need to perform the procedure, this will include a good light source. We need to have a cuscos speculum with swab sticks and freshly prepared acetic acid is the required, disposable gloves and 0.5% chlorine solution for decontamination of the used equipment. So these are the things that we need for performing this procedure and various types of forms and registers will also be required for maintaining the and recording the findings. Next, please. This is the flow of the screening program, how we are going to conduct it. So first of all, all the females who are visiting gynae OPD, they will be screened whether they are eligible for this screening or not. Once we have identified the eligible candidates, then they will be counseled for wire testing. So the wire trained nursing personnel will be there to counsel the female for wire testing. After counseling, the written informed consent will be taken and the procedure will be performed by another nurse who is also a wire trained nursing personnel. 
after performing the procedure then the decision will be taken with the help of the residents and the faculty who are there in the opd whether it will fit in a screen and treat criteria or it will go in follow up procedure or it needs to be further referred next please scope of the program this program will include all eligible women who are in the age group of 30 to 65 years and they are attending gynae opd all eligible female employee of aims rishikesh pregnant women those who have undergone hysterectomy or they are previously diagnosed with cancer or precancer they will be excluded from this screening program next please so counseling and written consent part this will be done by a trained nurse only so when we are doing the counseling of the female we need to establish a proper communication with women we have to ensure that every single participant is counseled that via procedure is painless this is easy to do and this will be done with all due privacy next please we have to encourage them to reflect their views and we have to clarify whatever the doubts they may be having we need to clarify all the doubts also simultaneously we have to inform them regarding vaccination of younger age girls in the age group of 9 to 15 years so this is the best opportunity to talk to them and discuss them regarding the vaccination part also next about the procedure how the via procedure is performed next please so in this the position that will be given a lithotomy position will be given to the female and uh, the person who is performing uh, the procedure will wear the gloves and insert the speculum to visualize the cervix after visualization of the cervix we have to identify the external os next uh, once we have identified the external os and we are visualizing the cervix then we have to check whether any secretions mm -hmm. are there if any kind of secretions are there it needs to be gently wiped off and we have to discard that swab stick then after clearing the secretions we have to use freshly prepared 5% acetic acid soaked cotton swab and we need to apply it over there gently and firmly once we have applied 5% acetic acid then we have to wait at least for 1 minute and then we have to check whether any white lesion appear or not now why the white uh, next please this is basically this is our transformation zone this is how the cervix looks like when we uh, see it through the speculum so here we can see the in the mid we have the external os and uh, the the area which is surrounding the external os this is basically columnar epithelium and next to it which is lighter in color it is our uh, squamous epithelium and the part which is highlighted that this arrow part this indicates our transformation zone so when we are looking for the acetovite lesion after application of 5% acetic acid we need to check for the appearance of lesion in this zone most of the lesions they will be appearing in this zone only so when we are uh, re recording the findings we need to check what is the location of the lesion what is the color of the lesion what about the margins of the lesion so so many things we need to check and we have to record it accordingly next please so how the acetic acid is helping us to diagnose the pre invasive uh, lesions acetic acid causes intracellular dehydration and coagulation of the protein within abnormal cervical cell so if there are abnormal cervical cells so after the application of 5% acetic acid they will turn into white that's why we call these lesions as acetovite lesions so like in this picture we can see this is before the application of 5% acetic acid this is how the normal cervix looks like and here the yellow color uh, arrow is there the yellow color arrow it's basically showing the columnar epithelium and the green color arrow which is on the outer side this is showing the squamous epithelium and if at this time at this point of time only we need to check if there are any secretions if there are any secretions we need to clear them off next please next slide shows this is the uh, cervix after the application of 5% acetic acid so you can see so many acetovite lesions have appeared after application of acetic acid uh, the lower green color uh, lower green color arrow is there here this acetovite lesion it is quite dense in color and it is having well defined margins and the position when we are recording this will be saying between 7 to 8 o'clock position we can see the acetovite lesion whereas at the top if we see yellow color arrow this is showing another acetovite lesion mm. and this lesion is a uh, is not that much dense and it is having irregular margins and the position will be, will be between 11 to 1 o'clock and the uh, blue color arrow it is showing basically the secretion so this is a uh, it's a kind of discharge which is there it is not a part of acetovite lesion so this is how the via positive cervix looks like next please 
this is another case of via positive cervix here also we can see the green color uh, arrow is there which is showing the acetovite lesion so in this case you can see that this lesion is not dense uh, as as dense as we have seen in the previous slide and it is having irregular margins also besides this this is extending into the endocervical canal so this is near to the external os so, so when we are recording the findings we have to check whether the lesion is extending into the endocervical canal or not that is also important to decide screen and treat approach next please so this is our screen and treat approach that we need to follow this is the flow diagram for that so all the eligible women when when they undergo via testing if they uh, if the via test comes out to be negative it means after application of acetic acid there is no acetovite lesion on the cervix then the woman needs to be recalled for screening after 5 years suppose the via test comes out to be positive like in the previous two slides we have seen that after application of acetic acid uh, there was a uh, appearance of the acetovite lesion so that was via positive so in positive cases we have to see whether the lesion that has appeared it is eligible for screen and treat approach or not like dr ekshita has already explained about cryotherapy and thermal ablation so there are two certain criteria that we need to follow before we uh, go for cryotherapy or thermal ablation first we need to check what is the location of uh, the acetovite lesions if the acetovite lesion is entering into the endocervical canal like uh, can you go back to the previous slide like in this case we saw that the acetovite lesion which is in gray which is shown by the green arrow this was almost extending into the endocervical canal so this case will not be uh, you know referred for screen and treat approach this will not be eligible for that approach uh, you, you can go back to the next slide and uh, the another thing that we need to check is if there is any infection if you can see any kind of infection is there or the acetovite lesion is extending into the endocervical canal or it is expanding uh, more than 75% of the cervix in those cases the patient is not eligible for cryotherapy or thermal ablation in rest of the cases they are eligible for cryotherapy and thermal ablation and the procedure has been explained uh, by dr ekshita in detail how it is done so cryotherapy is basically freezing in in this we are freezing the that part of the cervix whereas in thermal ablation we are giving excess amount of heat so once we have done uh, the cryotherapy or the thermal ablation procedure then again we have to uh, call the woman after 6 months for follow up and again we have to see whether the eligible uh, lesions are eligible for screen and treat or not then we can have the another case where the lesions are not eligible for screen and treat approach it means either of the criteria is there it is either it is extending into the endocervical canal any kind of infection is there or it is occupying more than 75% of the cervix so in those cases we have to refer this patient for the colposcopic examination to the gynecologist who will be sitting in our opd the third scenario will be uh, suspicious when we are not clear whether uh, the uh, findings are positive or negative we have the doubt so in that case also our via trained nursing personnel who so very is performing the procedure they will be calling the faculty and the resident on duty to confirm the findings so this is how we are going to uh, go about the procedure next please these are the records and registers that will be maintaining so we will be having a questionnaire to assess knowledge of the female about cancer of cervix and hpv vaccination we will be having eligibility criteria sheet for selection so at the time of registration only we will be screening the female those who are in eligible age group that is between 30 to 65 years and then we will be selecting them for the screening program after we have uh, identified the eligible eligible female then we will be counseling so we'll be a counseling checklist for that once after the counseling then the female will be going for the via procedure and there will be having clinical information pro forma and we have a consent form and we have the format to record the findings and for follow up also so these are the different types of records and registers that will be uh, maintaining in our uh, nurse led uh, screening program next please so to conclude uh, i would like to say that active involvement of empowered nurses empowered nurses have knowledge and they are competent with an evidence based approach can bring significant change preventive and curative aspect of patient care thank you